everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday q and I'm Eric Griffin, president of ITM Trading. With me, I, I, I have Lynette Zhang, who you all know, our chief market analyst here. And uh, for those of you who don't know who are tuning in for the first time, we take your questions. You submit them to us at questions at itmtrading.com. I go through them, I put them on a one sheet, and I ask them to her live. She's not seen any of these questions. So you get a real, true, live, organic response. Now, we put it up on the screen in front of us, though, so you can't cheat. Don't look. I, I won't. Okay, I'll, I'll ask I'll, the first My question. eyes are closed. <laughs> All right, Francois L. asks, what would trigger a country reset versus a world reset? Well, if a country is borrowed heavily outside of the country, then that would trigger a countrywide reset, like we've seen in Venezuela and Argentina and, and Turkey and many other countries. So, but because versus a world reset, well, the whole world is going to at some point have trouble borrowing and therefore, and we know we're at the end of the game with the central banks, with the world anchored at zero and debt levels, you know. So do you think we'd see that we could see a bunch of little tiny country resets before we see a global one? Or do you well, think, think it's think more we've like- we've already been seeing that. Yeah, but I mean, going into the future, do you expect more of them, more of other countries going into a hyperinflation then a reset type scenario before we see a global wide reset? I, you know, I think that we'll keep getting these fires that we've been getting. So that's not something really that we're waiting for. And I don't have the graph in front of me, but I just went through uh, every year the Bank of Canada does a research report on sovereign debt defaults, so sovereign meaning government debt defaults. And um, last year was huge for advanced economy defaults, and people don't realize this, but it's been rising. And so we're seeing emerging economies. Um, we're, we're already seeing that. It's not something that might happen. We're actually already seeing that. But that's also part, since we're so integrated, um, that's part of what's going to force the global economy to reset. But they need to reset. We need a new new financial structure. Why do you think it takes the Bank of Canada doing a report on that to make it obvious? Because it's not like something. <laughs> it's not like something we see in the headlines. Well, you didn't the see time. the report from the Bank of, Con no. of, of Canada making it. Um, <laughs> Because why, if you're thinking that, we're taught to think that government bonds are the safest thing, the flight to safety, right? And what backs a government currency, but the full faith and credit of the government. So it's that confidence piece. So no, they don't want you to think that they could possibly default. But there is a structural shift that's even happening, in fact, um, you know, well, actually, we're going to, I want to bring that up with George Gammon, who you probably will see that before you see that. Sorry for the little hiccup. Uh, oh, because yeah, I forgot we're recording. We're not live. We're, we're not live, are we? No. We're no. recording. Yeah, yeah. I totally forgot. I know, because we, we're used <laughs> to doing this live, but I wanted to do George live. That's right. Today. Um, but it seems like uh, the U.S., the 10-year Treasury, which is the key flight to safety asset, and actually the foundation of the global financial system, it looks like there's a structural shift that's underway right now, and it's not being looked at in that manner anymore. And so that's what will force the total global reset because that's the foundation of everything. Hmm. So what do, you, what do you think that means for the price of gold and silver in regards to the fundamental value of each? Oh, pff. Well, look, they're going to keep doing more of the same, which is more debt, more new money printing. And the more they do, the higher the fundamental value of gold goes. Because when they reset the currency, we don't know what that cover ratio is. Like people say, 1,000 to 1. It could be 10,000 to 1. Uh, we don't really know what that cover ratio is going to be. But what we do know is the more debt they take on, the more new money that they print, the higher that fundamental value is. Right. And we'll have to be. And I to think that's, that's probably why Rickards, currency. for example, gives such a wide range. Exactly. Right? He, that's exactly why he does, because nobody knows what that cover ratio is going to be until they do it. 
All right, so Richard H. asks, once you have gold, what can you do with it? You can't go to Safeway and get groceries with it. You can't go to Target and buy underwear with it. You can't go to a convenience store and get gasoline for your car. Right. So what you, but it is a store of value so that you can convert it into any currency that you might need to. So you can go to Target or buy gas, et cetera. Now, having said that, we're also coming up to the point because you're assuming that you'll always be able to do those things with dollars if you're in this country. And, you know, the question is how many dollars will you need to do the same thing? There's your hyperinflation with a wheelbarrow. Well, maybe not cash because the preference is going to be digital. But that's the whole point of both physical gold, particularly. No, you're not going to take it to Safeway. But you can convert Maybe if it we into got into a barter fiat, situation that post economic then you probably still collapse, want right? silver for that. <clears throat> right. You're probably good point. Right, not going to want silver. gold for that. Um, although, although there are some some options, but yeah, that's what you're going to do. So you're you going to convert it, it into the fiat to protect your wealth. Yes, you that's use it you to use protect it your purchasing power. Yep. And your wealth, and then you can convert it into any fiat, and therefore any good or service. All right, so Ben L. asks, uh, you say to keep some cash outside the banking system. Mm -hmm. what, what good will the cash be when we go to the digital dollar? And thus, how much cash should a person keep outside the bank considering we will convert to digital dollars? Right, that's a great <clears throat> question. Now, according to an IMF report, any of the cash that you take out right now would be considered cash in the wild. If you needed to deposit it, you can always make a deposit, but you can't always make a withdrawal. And once we go to digital, that doesn't mean that they're not gonna force you out of cash. Look at what they've done during the coronavirus pandemic, which is exactly what they said that they would do, have, you, uh, have the retail stores introduce you or refuse to take cash. And there are a number of retail stores that are refusing that. We're seeing a number of banks that are shutting down, making it more challenging to get cash. So they're really looking for you to volunteer, right? Because then it's your choice, it's not their policy. So if you maintain cash outside of the system that they can't take into negative rates because it doesn't have a chip in it or something like that, that it actually would have more value than your digital dollars would. Or any new cash that they might print that would contain a chip. If they and go enable digital them dollars, go though, and go negative on the interest rates, there's no way they let us keep cash, right? No, they, you know, that's why they're getting rid of as much of it right now as possible. But I don't really think that, according to the documents that I've read, they tested in India where they were very aggressive about it and, and it didn't really work very well. So they really need you to volunteer. So any cash that you do use is not going back out into the marketplace. And they've already been pretty aggressive with the, oh, cash is dirty, you know, and there's no change and all of this getting us to use more and more credit cards, debit cards, and taking us away from cash. So, I, I you know, they can do anything, um, but I don't see them necessarily, it would be too big of a PR blunder when confidence is as low as it is right now to demonetize the U.S. dollar. I, I They could do it, but... Obviously, that's not where I'm holding all of my wealth. But yeah, I do have a certain amount of cash outside of the system. If I needed to, I can always make a deposit. But I want to make sure that I have it. Just like, actually, not just like, but, you know, gold created limitations for what they could do back in the 30s. And that's why they had to take it away from us. Dollars create those same kind of limitations mm -hmm. for governments and central banks right now. That's why they need us to get rid of it. But they're doing it in a stealthy way so that we are thinking right. that it's our choice. I don't think they're going to um, 
outlaw it or completely right. demonetize it because you don't, think, you don't think they'll eventually get rid of all of it i mean oh yeah eventually yeah because they have to in order to really really lock down everything with the uh the digital dollar right. and being able to control the velocity of money and all that stuff exactly but if there's not <laughs> that much out there then they can still do that right. and it doesn't have the same kind of if impact it's super scarce then it's and it's hard to get then it yeah right makes sense well, certainly with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, they're definitely utilizing that to make, you know, ooh, cash spreading the disease. Right. And how many stores, you know, we do not accept cash. Well, look at that one piece in 2017 or and the one in 2015. They keep saying they want distance between their policies and how their policy is transmitted. Now, once you get the digital dollar, that's different because then they're within complete control. But they want all titles to be held digitally. Then it makes it easy. I mean, it's like a step-by-step -step process. If you hold your equity on your phone and it's broken down into little manageable pieces and you see that boat that you just have to have then you start to spend your equity and it's now there's a global market for your equity in your house. And before you know it, the normal person has no equity in anything. Mm. It's a whole nother level. <sighs> it's disgusting. It is. And that makes gold. That makes really having gold and silver out of the system more important than I ever thought it was. Mm -hmm. Because it's the only thing that you have that has no counterparty risk and is truly private. And because it's used <coughs> across the entire swatch of the global economy, you know, they can't really outlaw it. And it's used a lot in electronics, which is very big today and getting bigger. So... Mm. Rob P. asks, with so many people saying gold and silver are poised for tremendous gains, like Schiff, Gammon, Rickards... Mm. Rick rule. Why are they only saying to have approximately 10% in physical gold? If they're so convinced this is going to be a great time for precious metals, why not have 30% or even 50% or more in metals? Isn't that a great question? Um, I can't answer it unless it's to be more with mainstream. I would say that, I, you know, and you know what I buy because you see it all. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, <clears throat> I have more than 50%. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not all in because I do have some real estate, you know, but not for flipping, for living and bugging out. But I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in because there's not one little teeny weeny doubt. And it, exactly the point, you know, and it's not tremendous gain for me. It's not tremendous gains in terms of dollars because the dollar, that's just... With, it, with gold and silver going up in terms of dollars, it's just an indication of the decline in the value of the dollars. It's gold and silver holding my wealth so that I can take advantage of the opportunities that always present during resets, mm -hmm. right? Right now you've got real estate up here and you've got gold and silver value-wise down there. That's going to flip-flop. So... Yeah, I'm going to take those gains and I'm going to buy that income producing asset, whatever it is, when the time is right. So I, I agree with you. This is a great question. Why would you only have 10% in there? Where else is the rest of your money? I think your percentage that you choose to hold is to is relative to the your concern with what's going on. So if you are 100% convinced that... You know, we're going to have a reset in 12 months, then you're probably going to be more in gold and silver. If you are, eh, you know, it could happen some point, maybe 10 years, 20 years, you probably have less because you're more concerned about, you know, getting the gains in the current system. So I think but, uh, but ultimately I gotta tell you. a lot of the, hold on, though, a lot of these people say what they say, 10%, because it's to protect themselves. You know, uh, they don't want to go out there and say, you should have 100% of your wealth in gold and silver because if they do and then gold and silver go down, you know, you're going to be you're going to be upset with them. Right. Well, <clears throat> I'm not a short term straight trader, so I don't have a short term outlook. I'm definitely a strategist and I've been studying currency since 1987. So I am more than 100 percent convinced. Now, is it going to happen? Is the full reset going to happen within 12 months? Mm. 
probably not, except that we are coming into 2021. And they really have not been able to put in place the new systems. And it was a great experiment anyway. So even if they did, even if they were successful with SOFR transitioning from LIBOR, <clears throat> excuse me, then, uh, yeah, we still don't know what's going to happen with that. So actually, could be within 12 months. But it also could not be. It could, right. So. Exactly. I mean. But it. I mean, you're 100 percent convinced, so you're more all I'm in. I'm 100 percent convinced. Right, and and I would say. And and the other. All thing of us is, here are, but you know, there's people out there. I yeah. mean, we're gonna have Gammon on today. Maybe that's a good question for him, right? How how convinced are you that we're gonna have a reset in how soon? That that is so, Dylan. So let's you'll make have to sure go we back. Have that question. <laughs> we're gonna air this one, I think, tomorrow. So right. if, if you're watching this and you want to well, see the answer to no, that, you'll have to go back. We're gonna air this on Friday because tomorrow. Okay, so we're gonna air this yeah, on Friday. Friday. So you'll have to go back to the Wednesday one with uh, Q and A live with uh, Lynette and Gammon to find out the answer. But I will an I will <laughs> ask him that, you know. And I think it's also partly training, you know, and also valuations. When so I'm write looking that down out from here, type it out so that I can make sure I put it in there. Yeah, the question from the gammon question. W right. Watch why the video back have... and then. Okay. Yeah, or we it's can talk number about it four. After. It's number four. Question of why, oh, okay. if you know, with so many people saying gold and silver are poised for tremendous gains. Yes. Gotcha. Right. That's the question that, and I'll ask George. Perfect. Gotcha. All right. So Bill C asks, with the, po did you have anything else you needed to say about? Uh, that? Just also, uh, that is for me when I'm looking at valuation. I know that gold, both gold and silver, physical gold and silver, are the most severely undervalued asset out there, period. Because they're the only asset that hasn't been targeted for reflation. So I want most of my wealth in an undervalued asset that 100% I know is in a long-term positive trend. Okay. All right, so Bill C. asks, with the possibility of imposing negative interest rates on Fed coin, mm -hmm. surely that will increase the velocity of money, thus inflation. What's your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, then you know they can ha they'll just keep in, uh, raising interest rates on whatever you're holding in there, so that you can visibly see it deteriorating before your eyes. And when you're saying raising them, you mean negatively, negatively lowering them further and further. Ex yes, yes, exactly, right. exactly. So when and you see your principal, to, yeah, you see, exactly. Go ahead. I'm when you sorry. see your principal eroding, it's going to make you spend it. Exactly. And try and, you know, do buy anything that can hold its value better. Well, and that goes back to what we were talking about. I think it was in question three about cash outside the system and why we were saying that, you know, they have to make the supply of it less and less and less. So it's not as available because if you we, they go negative on FedCoin and you still have the ability to run to cash, well, that's where you're going to go. So then their agenda doesn't work by getting going negative on the interest rates. So it gives uh, you a flight to safety. Cash unless, is a flight to safety. Unless, as they discussed in one of the millions of papers that I've read from the IMF, that they embed a chip in it. So as they go negative, that's why the cash right now is called cash in the wild, mm -hmm. because it does not have that embedded right. chip. But in future cash, so that you don't think anything has changed, so you can still get cash, right? It'll have that chip. And as they go to negative rates, then they have the ability to um, make your cash also go to negative rates. So when you go to deposit it, you go to use it, it'll reflect the negative rate. It'll be like some kind of scanner, and it'll say, beep, that one's only worth, that $20 bill's only worth $19 now. Exactly. <laughs> wow. Okay. Exactly. Level. That's what they talked about. Yeah, I mean, I didn't you know. realize. I remember reading that report, but I didn't realize that they were talking about the chip piece. Oh That's heck crazy. yeah! Oh heck yeah! So, uh, well, let's see. This is on Friday. So this week, you know, I've got George Gammon, and we just did a little open mic Q and A in the studio. So if you haven't seen that, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And then also. Talking with Greg Manorino. When and is that? you're going to be, that's actually, well, if this is Friday, that's it's yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> it's that's a little funny. challenging because we're not used to filming, no. but, uh, or to recording these and then releasing them. We're used to doing them live. But, you know, my conversations with Greg are always interesting. We get into all the technicals of the markets, and these are things that you need to know. 
And next week, I'll be on with Jason Hartman, and he is very much about real estate. So we're going to be asking, if you have any questions on real estate, send them in to questions at itmtrading.com and just put Hartman next to that. Put it in the, the subject, subject line because then I can pick them out real quick and easy. Yep. So I'll be asking all those questions and lots more. Uh, I enjoyed the interview that I did with him, I guess, about a month ago. Uh, and he was great. So I'm excited and really looking forward to this conversation. We, we've had some, you know, I like it. I almost like it better when you don't necessarily agree on everything with the other person. Yeah, it makes it more interesting. Exactly. And you should see different Plus, perspectives anyway. Exactly. So make sure that you visit our blog, itmtrading.com forward slash blog, and that's where you'll find all of the images, all of the links, as well as the blog that I write every week. And um, if you want to talk to one of our consultants, just click that Calendly link below and set up a time to have that conversation. If the time you want isn't available, call us, 888 696 Four six five three, and we'll set up a time that works for you. Because frankly, we really are all here to be of service. Yep. And it's more important now than it's ever been. Frankly, yeah. it's crazy what's going on it's out true. there. So, all of that said, please keep in mind: a hundred percent, it is time to cover your assets with more than ten percent. But you do whatever you're comfortable with. And we use here the Wealth Shield, which its foundation is physical gold and physical silver that runs no counterparty risk. You want to avoid counterparty risk as much as possible these days. There's a lot going on. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.